back there. Um, my presentation is uh, about my journey um, with Git and my contribution to Nextcloud. So I'm doing it this year as the Rails Girls Summer of Code team with my wonderful partner, Arti. Um, and you're gonna hear more about that program later from the uh, team that did it last year. Um, I think when you start to contribute, uh, getting your mind around Git can be one of the larger tackles, um, things to tackle. It seems like this huge imposing tool that everyone seems to know about um, and you're not quite sure where to go and if you make a mistake, maybe everyone's getting angry with you. Uh, but as you start to learn and pull back the curtain, you start to see a few of the levers and buttons that make it work. So. It starts with git clone. You get this download of all these files on your computer and you think, oh, okay, great. What's this? Time to explore. Um, you have the opportunity either to fork it or you can check it out in your own branch. Uh, if you don't have, uh, sorry, you have the opportunity to have your own branch or you can fork it if you don't have the permissions. Um, you get everything on your machine so you can start working. And then you need to have some idea about it. So if only you had more information, if only you had a brain. Uh, these are a collection of the commands that I use to find out more information about what I'm working on. And these are the heart of my commands for when I'm making my commits to the wonderful Contacts app. So unfortunately, five minutes is a little bit short to explain what all these commands do. Uh, but if you're not sure, I definitely recommend uh, looking at the slides and checking them all out later. These are the ones for when I'm feeling a little bit cowardly or a little bit unsure of what I'm doing and I'm kind of thinking, oh, I better stash that and make sure that I'm up to date and then I can get my changes back later. And these are the ones where I'm out in the woods and I'm like, oh, yeah, naughty word. Um, and they really help you get out of sticky situations. And this is if you need to squash any wicked witches that you find in the code base. It's kind of really useful. So you've made all your commits, you've got your work up there, and now it's time to make the pull request, which can be incredibly nerve-wracking. You're worried about if you commit something wrong and then the app maintainer is shouting at you. Or <laughs> if you, <laughs> by accident, have written back code and then you get a negative review. So before you send your lovely commits off, a few tips would be to add some keywords, make sure you reference the issue, add labels, add reviewers. Um, I think one of the things when I was getting started with making pull requests is I kind of thought this is the face that the review would be pulling and that they would be judging uh, my code very harshly. And then you wait. And you wait a bit longer. Uh, because normally they're not online exactly the same time as you, uh, but eventually it's coming back. And generally this has been my experience, that it's a very positive response, you get a little bit of refactoring, you learn a little bit more, uh, but generally it's a positive and a very friendly uh, code review. So congratulations, you now officially can call yourself a contributor. Um, and. My takeaways would be to ask lots of questions, don't be afraid, commit often, and with very relative uh, commit messages so you can look back for yourself and remember what you did, but also so that others can see what you were doing. Uh, make PRs and get reviews on your code uh, before you go too far down the wrong path. And if you make a mistake, it can generally be reset. There's very little you can do to really mess it up. So you'll also have a great time, and as you can see, I managed to get a copy of the group photo from yesterday ahead of time. Uh, so thank you very much.